Welcome to this YSL Report Builder tutorial. In this video, we'll explain how to calculate the percentage of group totals in a table. We'll start with a quick recap of creating a simple grouped table, and then explain how the scope of the sum function affects the results it returns based on the location of the function inside a group. We'll show how to manipulate the scope of the function so that we can calculate the percentage contribution of detail rows to the group totals, and then also to the table totals. In the final part of the video, we'll compare the group totals with the table totals, again manipulating the scope of the sum function to do so. So let's get started. Here's an example of the type of thing we'll create in this video. We're going to show a list of films grouped by which genre each film belongs to. We'll show their Oscar wins value, and then we're going to calculate the percentage that that Oscar win value contributes to the grand total for the genre and we'll have a second column which calculates the contribution of each Oscar win to the grand total for everything in the entire table. There's nothing particularly complicated about this, it just requires careful manipulation of the scope over which we calculate the sums of our Oscar wins. To get started, if you wanted to follow along, you'll need a copy of the YSL Movies database, and if you don't already have that installed, you can use this video to help you get it set up, and there's a link in that video's description that you can use to download any files you'll need. Assuming you've got that part already, I've got a blank report waiting for me in Report Builder, and I'm going to begin in here by creating a new data source which connects to that YSL Movies database. So I'll right click on the data sources folder and choose Add Data Source. I'll call it Movies. I'll use an embedded connection and make sure I'm pointing to a Microsoft SQL Server. Then I'll click the Build button on the right hand side. My server name, I'm going to type in a shortcut to the local host, so dot backslash. And then the name of the instance of SQL Server I'm using, which is SQL 2017. Having done that, I can click the drop down list at the bottom of the dialog box, choose my movies database, and then click OK a couple of times to create my data source. Next, I can create the data set by right clicking on the movies data source and choosing Add Data Set. I'll call this one Films and then click the Query Designer button at the bottom of the dialog box to get a bit of help making up the select statement. From the Tables folder, I'll expand the Film table first and select the title and the Oscar wins. And then from the Genre table, I'd like to select both columns in there, Genre ID and Genre. And the simplest way to do that is just to tick the box next to the Genre table name. I'll add a filter so that I only see Oscar winning films in this data set. So I'll click the Add Filter button over here change the field name to Oscar wins, the operator to is more than or equal to, and then for the value I'll enter the number one, and then I can click OK to create the select statement, and then click OK again to generate my data set. Next I can create a table to display the basic results. I'll start by deleting the title text box and then right click into the page footer and choose to remove that just to tidy up a little bit. I can then insert a new table into the body of the report by right clicking and choosing insert and then table. I'll assign the title field and the Oscar wins field to the first two columns of the table. Just to make sure that I can see all the text when I run the report, I want to change the font. You may be aware of this little bug that sometimes prevents fonts from being rendered correctly if I run the report just quickly now. Um, I don't see a value for every single row here. I've got missing, uh, missing values in this table. So just to make sure that all the film titles appear in the column headers, etc. Back in the design view, I can highlight all the cells in the table. Then I can change from the default font and then back to the original default font. If I run the report this time, I'll actually see the column headings in every single film name appear. Next, I'd like to group my table so that the films are organized by which genre they belong to. I've got several ways to do this. You may have seen the previous videos in the playlist which explain how to create groups, but I'm going to right click on the details object in the groups panel at the bottom of the screen and choose add group and choose a parent group. I'm going to choose to group initially by the genre field and that's because I want to display the genre name in the table and I'd also like to sort alphabetically by the genre name. I'll tick the boxes for adding a group header and a group footer and then click OK. And then I'm just going to modify the way the grouping works. So I don't want to group on the long text description, I want to change the group so it groups on the genre ID. So I'm going to right click on the genre group I've just created, choose group properties, and then change the group on expression from genre to genre ID. 
You may find better performance with particularly large data sets grouping on a simple numeric field like an ID rather than on a long text description. So I'll click OK to do that. A little bit of extra tidying up. I want to make sure that every genre displays these individual column headings of the title and the Oscar wins. So I'm just going to copy them from the top row of the table, the static row at the top, and then paste them into the group header row. So the first cell that's inside this bracket symbol from the left hand side. I can then remove the top row from the table entirely. I don't need that at all. So I'll delete that top row. And then I'm going to select um, some of these cells to apply a background color. So I can select the three header cells and the, um, the genre group header and change the background color to make them stand out a little bit. Maybe make the font bold as well. Then I'd like to create a total for the Oscar wins for each genre. So at the bottom of the Oscar wins column, I can select the Oscar wins field again. Because that's in the footer row of the group rather than on the details row, it generates a sum for me automatically. So at this point, I could maybe apply some other formatting just to make that stand out. And then a quick look at the results of the report. If I just nudge this back up into the top left hand corner, a quick look at the results. I've got my films organized by genre um, with the title and Oscar wins. To calculate each film's contribution to the total for the group, I need to essentially divide each film's Oscar wins by the group total. And that means I need to be able to reference that group total on each individual detail row in the group. We can do this using the sum function, providing we specify which scope we want to calculate this sum over. Let's head back to the design view and I want to show you what happens if we just add a basic sum function to this um, empty cell in the detail row. A quick way to generate the sum function here is to select the Oscar wins field again. Ignore the sum that's been generated at the bottom in the footer. In fact, I'm just going to delete that. And what I'm going to do is click on the Oscar wins field and then right click on it and choose summarize by a sum. So it's basically the same calculation as we've added to the bottom of the Oscar wins column. If I run the report at this stage, we'll see that the sum for each film isn't actually the same as the total for the group. Even though it's the same expression, it's calculating essentially the exact same value as the Oscar wins. And that's because of the default or the current scope that the sum function operates over. Because we've added the sum function to a detail row, it's calculating the sum over the scope of that row. So the sum is just the same as the value. What we want to do is extend the scope so that it operates over the entire group. To do that, let's head back to the design view and then we can select the cell containing the sum of Oscar wins in the details row and I'm going to right click on it and choose expression. The sum function has an extra optional parameter. It's not immediately obvious just looking at the expression builder that that's the case. But if you expand the common function section and then select the aggregate category, if you highlight any of the basic aggregate functions like sum, average, etc., you'll find that the examples show you that there's a second optional parameter. So this second option here shows me that the sum of the yearly income field is over the group by initial scope. So what we need to do is specify the name of the scope over which we want to calculate the sum. The name of the scope we're going to use is the name of the group that we created. So the group that I created is called genre. So inside the sum function, just before the close round brackets, I can type in a comma and then in some double quotes, I can type in the word genre and that will be the entire expression like so. Having done that, I can click OK. And then when I run the report, it shows me the grand total for the group on each individual detail row. So now all we need to do is divide the two values we've returned, the individual Oscar wins over the total Oscar wins for the group. Let's head back to the design view and I'm going to right click on the cell which contains that expression and choose to view the expression builder. Just after the equals operator, I just want to insert a reference to the value of the Oscar wins field. So I can do that fairly easily by selecting the fields category and then double clicking the Oscar wins. I can then enter the symbol for divide by, so a forward slash, and then click OK and look at the result if I run the report. I've now got the 
percentage contribution is not formatted particularly neatly, but the, uh, the value is calculated. Let's just tidy up the formatting. I want that to be formatted as a percentage with a couple of decimal places. If we head back to the design view, we can select the cell into which we've created that calculation, and then we can apply the percentage formatting by clicking that button, and then just increase the number of decimal places by clicking the increase decimals button a couple of times. Having done that, if we run the report again, we've now got a much neat, more neatly formatted value. Perhaps a quick title is required at the top of that column as well. I want that to say something like percentage of action total. And then for the adventure group, it would say percentage of adventure total. Back into the design view, if I click into this header cell, I'm just going to extend the width of that column to make it slightly easier to see. And then if I begin typing, I'm just going to type in the percentage symbol and then the word of, and then I want to reference the name of the genre for the group that we're currently in. To do that, I can type in, in a set of square brackets, the name of the field whose value I want to return. So I can type in um, the closed square brackets there, and that will make a reference to the genre field. Then another space at the end of that, and the word total. Having done that, if I finally run the report one more time, let's just change the width of that column back again. If I run the report one more time, I've now got a slightly more um, specific title. Maybe a slightly wider column would make that a little more readable, actually. Let's do that. There we go. That's a little bit better. We can use the same technique to find the grand total of all the Oscar wins for the entire table, providing we know the name of the table so that we can enter that for the scope parameter of the sum function. So let's head back to the design view. There's a couple of different places you can find the name of a table. If you select any single cell anywhere in the table and then right click on one of the grey boxes around the outside, you can then choose Tablex Properties. And when you've done that, you'll see the name property appears at the top. So my table is called Tablex2 currently. You can modify that if you like to give it a more descriptive name, but I'm happy with Tablex2 for now. An alternative location to find that property is in the Properties window. If I head to the View menu at the top of the screen and then tick the box for the Properties window, with this table selected, you'll see its name listed in, at the very top there, so it's called Tablex2. And again, you can change that property using the, uh, the, the name property here. Anyway, what I would like to do is add a new column to my table so that I can calculate the percentage of the grand total. So I'll insert a new column to the right. And to begin with, I'm just going to right click into this new cell, choose expression, and then I'm going to enter the sum function to refer to the Oscar wins field for the tablex2 scope. So I'm typing in equals sum, open some round brackets, head to the fields list, double click Oscar wins, type in a comma, and then in some double quotes, type in the name of the table you want to calculate the sum for. Having done that, if I just quickly show you the, uh, the final result there, once you've done that, you can click OK. And then if I head back to the Home tab in the ribbon and run the report, each row now will show me the grand total Oscar wins for every cell or every row in the entire table. So we can use the same technique now to divide the individual Oscar wins over the grand total sum of Oscars for the entire table. So back to the design view, we can right click into the cell which contains that expression and choose expression. And then just after the equal sign, I simply want to reference the Oscar wins field. I can then type in the forward slash to divide by, click OK. I'll add a manual column header here, so I'm going to call this one percentage of grand total. And then just change the column width so I can see that all on a single line. I'll also select that cell and apply the percentage formatting to it and add two decimal places. Having done that, I can click the run button again to see the results. And there we go, the percentage of the grand total. The final thing we'll do is calculate the contribution that each genre makes to the overall grand total. So basically we'll divide the grand total for each group with the grand total for the table. And again, we can do this just by manipulating the scope of the sum function. So back to the design view, I'm going to pick the bottom of the percentage of grand total column to do this. So this cell belongs to the footer row of the genre group. That means that if I 
ask for the sum of Oscar wins, just as a basic calculation, it will give me the total for the group. So I'm going to right click into that cell and choose expression. And the first thing I'm going to do is type in sum, open some round brackets, head to the fields list, and then double click Oscar wins and close around brackets. There's no need to specify a scope here. The current scope will give me the value that I want. I then want to divide that by the sum of Oscar wins for the entire table. So at this point, just to cheat a little bit, I'm going to copy and paste the sum function. And then just inside those closed round brackets, I'm going to type in a comma and in some double quotes, type in the name of the table whose scope I want to use. So table x2 in my case. If I then click OK and then run the report at that point, we'll see again, not a particularly nicely formatted value, but the contribution of this value here, 13 for the action films, to the grand total for all the Oscars in the entire table. Just a little bit of tidying up with the formatting there. I'm going to select that cell and then change the background color apply a percentage format and increase the number of decimal places and make the font bold as well so that it matches the photo row and then run the report again and there's my final result and you'll see a different value of course for each different genre as you scroll through the list you'll find that each genre contributes a different total amount so there we go. Changing the scope of the sum function is a simple technique to use, but it gives you that bit more power to create some interesting statistics about the items within a group. Hope you found that one useful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.